Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all-around hiring guru. And I am super excited about our guest today. So let me just get right to introducing him so we can get right to talking to him. So today on the show, I'd like to welcome Scott Murray, co-founder of Leadership America, CEO of Murray Media, and author of Whatever It Takes. You may also recognize Scott as an award-winning TV anchor and broadcast journalist and a keynote speaker and leadership facilitator. Scott is passionate about sharing leadership solutions and turning adversity into opportunities to better you as a leader. As a former sportscaster, Scott has learned a number of lessons from sports legends, including how to be successful in competition, the community, and in life. Thanks for joining us today, oh, Scott. You're, you're most welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> I am great. Good, good. You good. know, I have really kind of worshipped you from afar for so long. So it you is. You don't look old enough to have. No, uh, I have. <laughs> and so it's such an honor to be sitting here beside you oh, well, today. You're very kind. Thank, Thank you very much. So one of the first questions I always ask people, because you know, because you know a little bit about me, networking is a huge deal to me. Right. Do you remember how we got connected? I really didn't until we discussed it earlier at uh, Success North Dallas. Yes, right? such a great organization. Yes. In fact, we yeah. had our meeting this morning. Right, I've known Bill forever. I mean, literally forever. I think he's had that thing for about 30 years, 30, 32 years. 33 years. 33 years. Yes. Okay, well, I missed a year. Yeah, th we were just into, he announced it this morning that this was our first meeting of our 33rd year. 33rd year. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think it's important that people find a networking home mm -hmm. that they can lock into, plug into. So, because there's so many good things happening and like so many of the older generation are now stepping up to be mentors for our young executives. Right. You know, and these are our business leaders. It's no, amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. So I no. love what he does there. That's a great thing. I, he called me, I've, I've spoken over there several times. Matter of fact, last time I was there was uh, with Herschel Walker. I know, yeah. <laughs> that and, was uh, so good. We, we were told and in, in, in just, uh, you know, without sounding braggadocious that it maybe it was the best one that they had in, had in the 30 plus years of, of you know, I mean, Herschel is above and beyond. He did a great He's job. Such an amazing speaker. And I, and I know him so well and kind of know, we were just in, uh, in uh, Springfield, Missouri, uh, the Bass Pro Shops and what have you had a big event for the military. So mm -hmm. we were both there. I do a lot with the military. So we were both there about a month and a half, two months ago. And oh. it was, it was just great. But uh, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy that. And, and, and Bill asked me to come over and MC the 30th anniversary of the event. That's how I knew it was uh, <laughs> about 32 years because it was about two years ago that I was there. And I, at the time, really didn't realize it had been that long. So yeah. it's a great legacy that he's created over there. Absolutely. And I love what they're doing. And you mentioned your love for children, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a passion for helping them. But I love that as Success North Dallas is growing a little bit older, mm -hmm. they recognize the need to really pour into those young executives, which is why we've created this no young executive yeah. program. No question about it, yeah. I was studying to be a pediatrician. My best friend died of leukemia when mm -hmm. we were both in second grade. We were all of seven years old. It was the first wake I'd ever been to in my life. I had no idea what leukemia was, and I vowed then I was gonna find a cure for leukemia. And it's, it's rather ironic I'd be talking to you now because just last Saturday I emceed for the umpteenth time. I've, I've been there probably 20 times in Memphis, but uh, for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which was created, mm -hmm. it'll be in, in 2022, it'll, it, uh, it'll be, uh, well, 60 years because it was 1962 that Danny Thomas created that. And it's just, uh, it's incredible what it does, but making a difference in the life of a child is as good as it gets. And if it's a sick child, somebody that has leukemia, mm -hmm. childhood cancer, whatever, it's above and beyond. But I vowed that's what I was going to do and started the college when I was 17. It was in pre-med and that was it. I was going to be a pediatrician and was driving down the road and heard this disc jockey say, how would you like to meet millions of girls? Travel to millions of locations, make millions of dollars. You too can be a disc jockey. Okay, sign me up. I'm here. So, so much for pre-med. Yeah, right. Took a little turn into the radio station. Well, there were 517 
people that apply for the job. And they called me back about two months later, and I thought, well, I never heard from them. I'll never get the job. And lo and behold, I got the job work from 1 till 6 in the morning, my freshman and sophomore years in college. So it was kind of crazy. So uh, and I used to go home. Mom would have uh, breakfast ready for me, but it was what they had had the night before with my dad and my two younger sisters. And it was just a, it was an opportunity to, to, to be a part of what the, the media world was all about. And then the uh, television uh, general manager just down the road called me into his office one day and said, you ever done any TV uh, commercials? I said, no. He says, well, you look very young. You know, you could maybe do some. And then he opened up his desk drawer and said, try this on, Scott. I said, now, what is that, Mike? He said, it's a fake mustache. I need to give you a little age so you don't look like my baby face paper boy. <laughs> You'd be a great news anchor. You've got the look. You've got a good voice. This would work. And I said, oh, Mike, I'd be flattered, but I really want to be a pediatrician. I said, but if you got a job in sports, I memorized the back of every football and baseball card I ever had. Wow. Played a lot of sports and, you know, football, yeah. baseball, basketball, whatever. So, um, you know, next thing you know, I'm, you know, never, never, you know, went on to, to medical school. I was all set to go to Duke because that's where my mother's family had all gone to Duke, my grandparents, my cousins. So I said, I want to be a Blue Devil and uh, never, never went to med school. Ended up uh, getting right into television and, and the rest is history, as they say. So it's funny. I'm really curious. That's a fascinating story because I really, I, I knew that you had started out wanting to be a pediatrician, but I didn't know what caused that shift. Yeah. Oh, it was little Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shame little, on little oh, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but yeah. actually he changed oh. your life. Yeah. Oh, he did change my life. Yeah. No question. And you, you know what I did, Case? I, I kind of switched vocation and avocation. Okay. You know, because sports was, was my avocation. I just love, and, and you know, kids and studying and medicine and stuff like that. That, that was, I was going to be a pediatrician. That was my vocation. And then they kind of flipped. So, all these years I've continued to do nonprofit stuff mm. specifically or in particular with either the military or with kids. And lo and behold, my vocation was sports all those years. So it's kind of crazy. So at what point did you, and I'm just curious because so many people keep just pushing and pushing and pushing and they never recognize the success that they already have. Mm -hmm. At what point did you say, huh, I made it? You know, that's a, that's, I don't know that anybody ever asked me that question. Uh, that's interesting. Um, I guess I guess I, I, I won my first award. Mm -hmm. I was named Sportscaster of the Year. They had different, you know, United Press International, Associated mm -hmm. Press, different things like that. And then along the way, won some Emmys. And so when just you, some Emmys. Well, it, it's kind of <laughs> cool because I remember as a kid, wow, that's you know, yeah. that's that's an Emmy. And to win an Emmy after all these people that I'd seen on television do all these television shows as a kid growing up, I thought, wow, I've got one of those too. And then you win another one. That's it. I'll tell you what, though, the highlight of my career, my professional career, um, loved every minute of what I had a chance to be a part of in the media. But the highlight of my professional career was after I retired, a little prematurely. I'd done that for 30 years, but, but I retired early because my son had gone to Baylor. He got out with a degree in television film. And he said, you know, we got to work together, Dad. I've got a great relationship with both my son and my daughter. And I said, sounds like a good idea. So we could have a television production company and what have you. So we formed Murray Media World. And uh, murraymedia.net, if you'd like to check it out, <laughs> that's who we are, murraymedia.net. And so we did that. Well, with all the uh, relationships and all the events that I've emceed over the years with the military and what have you, we were asked to go to D, uh, to uh, Normandy on the 70th anniversary of D-Day. Wow. With two dozen World War II vets from North Texas. The greatest generation, right? Wow. We were on a bus for two, went to Germany, Luxembourg, Bastogne, Battle of the Bulge, into through Belgium, back into Northern France, Omaha Beach. And here we are on June 6th, and we shot, my son shot video, you know, he shot the of all these fellows, each one of these locations where they had been during World War II. Brought it back, I wrote it, put it together, hosted it, documentary, boom. End of conversation, it went on TV, we both won an Emmy. Wow, I did not of, know yes, that. Yes, highlight of my professional career. To win wow. an Emmy with my son going to Normandy, where my dad was a teenager in World War II, yeah. just out of high school, and so too was my, my, you know, my, my son's mother, my, my wife. And uh, so both his grandfathers were, were, were there in World War II. So it just, you know, and then as a result of that, we were asked to go, here it is the 80th anniversary coming up of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm. On the 75th anniversary, we were asked to go to Pearl Harbor. So we did that as well. So it's just, that was very, very special. Absolutely. And I mean, you, a lot of people might look at you and say, man, he's lucky. <laughs> Would you call it luck? What would you call it? Well, it's, it's a, I, 
I don't know if luck would be the right word, okay. but it, he's, he's been very fortunate to have the opportunities that he's been given, he's been afforded. And, and, uh, and we took advantage of those opportunities. I didn't look upon them as though, they, you know, I mean, wow, hey, buddy, my son, that's what I call him, buddy. I said, hey, <laughs> we've got a chance to, you know, this is really special. What do you think? He said, yeah, what do we do? And so we were always just, just so focused. And, and I used to tell them as kids, the same thing my dad taught me, because you can. Remember that, because you can. Dad, you think I can do it? Yep, yeah, yeah. because you can. Because you can, Because yeah. you can. And never give up. Be yourself, respect yourself, believe in yourself, because you can. You can do anything you want. Um, I've right. got a, I've got a, a story that I don't want to. No, do you're fine. You here. keep going. Well, I, I'll, I'll share a story with you. I hope I don't do what I did the other day. I was. Don't at, make me cry either. Well, I was in an event. <laughs> I was in an event the other day, and I lost it. And I all of a sudden I said, "Oh my gosh, tears are coming down my face." And I said, uh, "Well, I used to do a, a segment called Scott's Kids mm -hmm. on NBC Five back in the late '80s, '90s, into the 2000s, and it." was an opportunity. I was on the board of Big Brothers Big Sisters and they were looking to do a program that would highlight what some of these kiddos mm -hmm. from single parent families are up against and give them the opportunity to go out and do something that they really would like to be a part of. So I'd find out what they wanted to be and like one little boy, his name was uh, Nolan. So he wanted to meet Nolan Ryan. So I took him to the ballpark, the old ballpark, and, and he pitched down to them, and, and I caught, and he met Nolan. It was, you know, highlight of his life. Yeah. Well, there was another young girl, and this is where I kind of lost it. Um, her dad was I, sent to, to prison or had, had, had done some things. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he, you know, he was not in her life very much. And here the mom was just really special. And I set up with the mom that we would come over and, and do a little something. Well, she wanted to be a cook. She wanted to be a, you know, and she liked cooking with her mom and doing that type of thing. So no dad in the family. So we, uh, we went to a restaurant. I set it up and we went to a restaurant and she cooked and oh, this was great fun. Well, and I told her, I said, because you can, you know, always believe in yourself because you can believe in your, you know, you, you don't, don't give up, don't give up. I know it, you know, with your dad and everything, you, you can make it happen. You can do whatever you want, as long as you believe in yourself. And we kept telling it because you can. Well, at any rate, that was it. We did the story and it aired. I was doing an event about, uh, just before the pandemic, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago with Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. And we're at the Anatole, this is SMU Athletic Forum. And so as this all finished up, I said, Terry, hey, thanks for coming. Great to see you again. Because he lived in Dallas for a while. He's up in Oklahoma now, but he lived in Dallas for a while. So we got to know each other pretty well. And so we're walking off the stage and somebody calls, Mr. Murray, Mr. Murray. And he says, hey, Scott, I think that girl wants you. He says, go ahead, go on down and see what she wants. So I get down and here's this woman and, and all these people gather. There's like a thousand people in the ballroom. She said, Mr. Murray, and she puts out her hand and she said, I just wanted to thank you. And I said, yeah, for, well, no, what's that for? She said, I was one of your Scott's kids. Aww. And she was eight years old at the time. She was not like, this was, she, that was the late nineties. So it'd be, she'd be 33, yeah. 34 years old now, 35. And so at any rate, I said, you're kidding. I said, yeah. She said, well, gosh, it's so great to see you. This is so wonderful. You always wonder what happened to, to you guys and you girls and you know, she said, yeah. And I said, well, how are you doing? She said, oh, I'm doing fine. And I said, what did we do? Where did we, well, I wanted to be a chef and I wanted to be yeah. a cook. And so she told me and I said, that's great. She said, but I wanted to thank you because you told me that I could be anything I wanted. And you, you t said, you know, because I can and you mm -hmm. just, you know, stay strong. And I said, well, that's awesome. She said, I just wanted to thank you. I said, well, so what did you do? What are you doing now? She said, I'm a criminal defense attorney in Dallas. I about lost it. I couldn't believe it. Wow. And she was so excited how I, you know, changed her life or helped her, you know, helped her life so she could stay positive and productive and, and be the best little girl she could be. And she turned into an attorney. Wow. So it was, it was very cool. That so, is awesome. Yeah. And I, I really, so you never know whose life you're going to touch. I agree you know? wholeheartedly. And I, yeah. you know, I talk to people about that all the time. And I think the real message here is what you focus on, yeah. right? And Absolutely. you're teaching them to focus yeah. on the positive. Cause if, if you're only focusing on the negative, that's yeah. all you're yeah. going to see. And, and you'll be negative as a result. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, there's no question about that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the key to life. Positive, productive with a purpose. Yes. I have, a, I have what I call my period of Pyramid of Power is another speech I'd put together. It's called Peace, Perfection, Prosperity. Ugh. What do we look for in life? Peace, certainly peace. Yep. Do you not want peace in your Absolutely life? Absolutely, I do. Perfection, 
We all strive for perfection. Yep. We're not always going to get there, but uh, okay. And prosperity. You want to make a good living doing this and, and doing whatever else you do, but also with a, an opportunity to give a little something back to somebody mm -hmm. else that needs a helping hand. And there's 15 puzzle parts in there, okay? So what are they, you know, five, four, three, two, one to get to the top of the, of the okay. uh, pyramid, of the top of the triangle. Starts with your passion. Your passion mm. is, your, is your goal, your vision, your desire, your yes. dream, where you want to get to. But it's no good if you, you know, case, you know, if, if you're just, if you're right here, where, where are you going with a, with a passion? You gotta make it work, you gotta mm. put some, so passion, prepare, right? Passion, preparation, perseverance, staying positive, productive, professional, poised, patient, prompt, polite, partnerships, knowing how to get along with people in a yep. positive, productive way, then you move on, pride. Be yourself, respect yourself, believe in yourself. Philanthropy. Yep. Be a giver, you know? And and, and you it, you just, that's what you want. And principles, mm. how many people, I call it the trifecta, truthful, trusting, transparent. Ugh. You don't want to be around anybody else that exactly. doesn't have the three T's. Truthful, trusting, transparent. Those are the kinds of people you want to be a part of. And, and surround yourself. And then you get to the last one after principles, right at the top, purpose. Mm. Who you are, what you're all about, and what you do every single day to enjoy your life to the nth degree, and then to help all those people over there that need a helping hand. That's it. I am gonna show you my internal rules when we get done here. Okay, great. Because everything you just said, it, it's, it just resonates, you'll see. It okay, resonates okay, so okay, much with great, me, and great, I hope great. that, I All really right. hope our audience is listening to what was just said because that was a lot of information just dropped on you. So make sure you go back and listen to it again because <laughs> that was really, really good. He was preaching to you there. So oh. listen up if you want to have a happy life. Um, okay, so I do want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Um, your book, love your book. So I love that you broke it down and that, you know, you have had some incredible relationships with some of the best athletes in the world mm -hmm. and that you took like one characteristic that you really saw in each one of them, and although I'm sure they had many, oh, yeah, but you absolutely. highlighted right. one right. for each of them, and I really love that. Right. But your motto is, let me, I wanna make sure I get this right, always do whatever it takes to make a difference in our world, and that's kind of what we were just talking about. But yeah. how does this apply to people who are looking to make a difference in their careers? Well, I think, I, I, just what I just said with the pyramid of power, mm -hmm. uh, be positive, be productive. And, 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 and have that purpose in mind every single day. And I, uh, there's another P word that I don't have in there mm -hmm. that surrounds the whole thing is prayers. I'm a grown man. I've got, you know, <laughs> two adult grown children. Yeah. Don't have any grandkids yet, but I mean, I, I say my prayers every night. Have since I was five years old, since my mom and dad said, you say your prayers to the good Lord every night. And, and, and I don't always wish for things, but I just, I try to stay as positive about everything I do. Because if I'm not positive, even though it's tough sometimes. Yes. It's very tough. There's a lot of adversity out there. Um, and more so now than, than ever. But I try to, and, and I try to surround myself with, with good people. Um, and, and, and just good thoughts. And I think that's key. Um, you know, the, the, the poem I read to you that I wrote that, that I created for uh, Leadership America. Yes. It's about, it's about people. Um, and it's about you and how you surround yourself with, like I said, good people, but just be kind, courteous, and respectful to one another. All you've got to do is drive down Central Expressway and somebody's going to flip you off or- I'm sorry, you know, I won't you know do I mean? it again. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so sad. It's so sad. And you know, this, whatever it takes and what you just said, that motto, another one I have is, excuse me, live your life as a go-getter, share your life as a go-giver. Learn to give a little something back. And when you give something back and you can see, see a smile on somebody's face mm -hmm. over there, it's amazing what it does for you. It has, you have no idea. And, and that's, you know, the, the current uh, keynote that I'm doing is under my Leadership America umbrella. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, leadershipamerica.net if you'd like to check that one out. And it's uh, creating champions of change through a culture of civility. We've lost civility. Yes. People yes. don't know how to be nice to each other. If you don't agree with what I say or vice versa, I don't want to know you. I don't want to talk. To you. How silly is that? Mm -hmm. You just have an opinion. You have a point of view. A point of view. That's how you feel about things. But it doesn't make it good, bad, wrong, or right. It's just how you feel. And you know, you've got reddish, dark hair. Mine's blondish, and you know, whatever. I mean, everybody's different in certain ways. You might be, you know, five six. I might be six feet. The <laughs> point is, we can come together. 
Absolutely. And, you know, and how do you do that? Again, with words, you know, the, the letter, what? Creating champions of change through a culture of civility. And how do you do it? Through courage, commitment, character, compassion, and not confrontation, but conversation. Just getting along like we're having now. I know. That's what yeah. it's about. I had no idea we were so aligned, Scott, because I don't think we've ever really got to sit down and just have this conversation. And I love what you're saying here. And I think more important than anything is just I, 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 the civility. I right. mean, even in yeah, the workplace, you know, I've, you know, I've worked in places where it was toxic, where it was hostile. People just couldn't be nice to each other and they'd mm -hmm. go out of their way to make somebody feel bad or hurt their feelings. Purposely. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but I want to go back to passion too, because mm -hmm. this is something that's really important to me mm -hmm. because I tell people, you know, I help people find their passion, mm -hmm. you know, so they never work another day in their life. And because I feel like- Help me with that, that'd be fun. <laughs> I will help you because I feel like I was so fortunate because I don't know if you knew this or not, but this is not my first career. Okay. My first career was in accounting and I did that for 20 years and it was not my purpose nor my passion and it was, it was awful. Now that I look back, I thought it was okay. Right. You know, I was making a living and, you know, doing, doing well, the nine to five. Somewhere along the way you finally got it, huh? Somewhere along the way I finally got it. And when I did, I was like, oh, I've been living life asleep, mm -hmm. not fulfilling my purpose. And now in my purpose, it's not to recruit. It's not to do a podcast to help people. It is to help people because that's my give, right? But my purpose is to help people find their passion and to help them find careers where they're satisfied. Mm -hmm. That is my passion. That is my purpose. And I love, I can't wait to get up and go to work in the morning. So. Well, I'm kind of much the same way. Yeah. And each day is different. Uh, I had six events today. And, and you're, you're, uh, you know, and, and I've still got a couple more uh, after, after I finish I here. One for the military and one for like uh, white belt kids cancer. So, no, and I'm not, no, not I know, well, not I know, I'm, in probably getting, I'm in good shape. Okay. We're, we're probably getting shape. close. So I've I'm, got another two hours, so go for it. Oh, okay. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk to you for two hours. We'll just no, break no, it up into several episodes. Another, I do have another 45 minutes, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I really want to get to this question because okay. we are kind of getting towards the end of the time already, believe it or not. And I could okay. talk to you all day. I, and I, I talk want, too much. I'm sorry. No. And I want to have more conversations with you. Okay. You have to promise me right now we will have more conversations. All right. We'll do it again. Okay. Perfect. But I really want to talk to you about your dad mm -hmm. and what impact he had on you and why oh. that was important and why we, as the more experienced generation, should be reaching down and pouring into those young people. Well, obviously, we didn't talk about my dad before we came on the air, but uh, obviously you read my book because my, my book is dedicated to my dad mm -hmm. because my dad was my ultimate role model, as is my mother, too. They were, they were a great tandem. Uh, my mom's still living. Uh, my dad passed away about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, but uh, actually, it's been 12 now. It's hard to believe. But, but the point is, he just was always so positive about everything. And like I said, because you can. You know, he'd throw me that football, yep. and I'd catch it, and I'd fumble it. And I'd go, oh, Dad. You know, I'd be seven years old or whatever, you know, eight. i go, I'm never going to catch it. Yes, you will, because you can. Next one, you know, I told you. See, because you can. You can catch it. And... Everything we did, throwing ground balls, throwing footballs, whatever. And he was like that throughout life. Uh, just whatever it might be. He just, you know, I, I could just look at him. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that's really crazy. Um, I'm driving down the road. My wife and I will be there. My, my you know, everybody called him, my, my uh, you know, kids called him Pop. That was his grandfather name was Pop. Driving down the road and all of a sudden today I, I, I need a, a parking spot or something and I can't find one. And all of a sudden, oh my gosh, look at this, Here, right in front. And my wife will say, thanks, Pop. <laughs> we always think, everything, these things happen to you to go, oh, Pop's there again. That's you know, awesome. It just, it, it, it's crazy. It's almost like Pop is looking down. I got it covered. Just yeah. give it a minute. Just trust me. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's <laughs> because funny. Because I can. Yeah, because I can. That's, right. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, uh, but he was just uh, ultimate role model, uh, just big on education big on integrity, big on making a difference in the lives of those that needed it most. Uh, when I was here, seven years old, same year that I, the same month, uh, little, little uh, Frankie died the first part of October, right after we'd been in school mm -hmm. for a month, month and a half. And uh, then Halloween comes about. My little sister and I go out trick-or-treating. You know, we got our bags, we're seven, you know, I'm seven, my sister was 
five, five and a half. Out the door we go, and oh, this is great. You know, what'd you get? What'd you get? You know, and then we come back home, and we're all excited. Look at look at the candy we got. Look at all the things. And what happens? My mother hands us a Maxwell House coffee jar, uh, metal coffee jar, with the words U N I or the letters U N I C E F around it. UNICEF. She yeah. says, now you go out trick-or-treating for the children that can't trick-or-treat. Aww. They might have, you know, be someplace around the world, and they don't have any food to eat, let alone all this candy. That's when I learned about philanthropy. Mm. And that's how my parents were, my mom and my dad. Incredible. They were involved with the, the church, the school, the community chest prior to the United Way, and all those things. Incredible teachers. Wow. Mm -hmm. How fortunate to have grown yeah. up under their tutelage. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very quickly, I do have one more question because yeah. you have <clears throat> had access to some amazing people and you know leaders and business sports teams and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. After seeing all of them as a whole, how would you define strong leadership? People that never give up. Mm -hmm. People that know there are going to be good times but they also know they're gonna be bad times or challenging times. Not times that you can't overcome, yes. just things that you've gotta think a little harder about and work a little harder to get to where you wanna be. And I've met people like that. Uh, how about the Dallas Cowboys? You know, they started off with six or, you know, they lost the first game, but then six wins in a row, then that game against the Denver Broncos this season, and my gosh. Was that the most like, recent oh, one, that yes. slaughter? <laughs> yes, that slaughter. That's exactly what it was, Casey. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, come on. And I don't what, watch football. And what, I do what that. is the story here? Yeah. And the next week, and it, it, if you think back to, it was 92 or 93, when the Cowboys, you know, Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith, and they won three Super Bowls, in, in, or two Super Bowls in, th in uh, three years. Yep. Yeah, two Super Bowls in three years, three, or three in, in four years, three in four years. Um, everybody went, oh my gosh. And they had one of those games, I think it was 93, that they were cruising along and they had one of those games, oh my gosh, what is this? I think it was 92 before they won the first one under Jerry Jones and, and Aikman and what have you, because they won 92, 93, and 95. And I just, you know, and then what they do this past Sunday? They look like world beaters again. They were right on. It's the same players and everything. I mean, hello, couple injuries in there, but yep. don't give up because you, you can. can. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I told my kids the same thing. Oh my goodness, that was awesome! What yeah. a great way to wrap it up. Yeah, well, so beautiful. Well, you've been great too, and you know what? We still have to ask our VIP questions. You're not getting out of okay. here without those. Okay, my, my sister. Yeah. She's a, she heads up the hematology oncology department at Children's Hospital in Minneapolis. And uh, she teaches at the medical school, sharp girl. And she, uh, I could not say when I, when she was a, a little girl, you know, I had two younger sisters. And, uh, and she, you know, she, I couldn't say her name. Her name was Mary, Mary Catherine. So I couldn't say Catherine. So I called her Casey. I could say Casey. She got the name Casey. They call her Casey to this day in the hospital. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> So you'll never forget my name. I won't forget your name. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yep, all, right. Yep. all right. Are you ready for the VIP questions? Uh -oh. Okay. If you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? Um, if my dad were still living, I'd take my dad. Um, I'd, I'd probably uh, three people. Do I have to just take three? It could be yes. I take people I'd, or things. Yeah, I take. I take. Uh, I'd probably take my wife and my two kids. Okay. And why would I pick, take them instead of things? So they have the opportunity to, to grow with me, to learn with me, mm -hmm. to be educated with me, and to enjoy and experience with me. You know, so it. we could all do it together. I love it. Sounds like you're pretty much the kind of dad that your dad was. I probably learned a lot from him. That's, yeah. that's a good point. That's, yeah, very, very, yeah. Both my parents were very, very, yeah. That, that, yeah, that's, I never thought of that, but you're right. Well, good. Yep. So I'm really curious about this. Uh -oh. um, what <laughs> What is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? Um, I start every day off with two words. Can I guess? Yeah. I can. No? No. Okay. Thank you. Oh, gratitude. Yeah. I gratitude, love it. Gratitude is something that we have forgotten in this planet. Mm -hmm. Be grateful for what you have and the, afford the opportunities you've been afforded. And, you know, there are a lot of other things that I'd like to be a part of. Um, some people went up, you know, in, in space. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd love to have been in one of those capsules and, and take it, you know, thing. but no, I, I say thank you. I'm about to, uh, to embark on another day. 
and I hope it's the best one I've ever been a part of. So I said thank you every morning. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. And then and then move on as, as productively as I can. Uh, I was about a month ago. I was asked to. I was on a podcast, and I was asked to write a letter if it was my last day on earth. Mm. I've done this exercise. Have you? Mm -hmm. It was tough. Yeah. And I started off with the words thank you, and I ended with the words thank you, and then I wrote what I had to write in there. But the interviewer said nobody had ever written thank you like that at the beginning. I said I'm thanking the planet. I'm thanking the world. I'm 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 saying thank you. I'm if I'm leaving, I want to say thank you. I want to have the gratitude, and then at the end, before I'm gone. The last words I want to say is thank you. Because we, we just don't, as you said, we don't yeah. have gratitude at all. So. Uh, I'll share with you part of my morning ritual if you don't mind. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. So every morning um, I get up and I have my quiet time. I do my, my miracle yeah. morning, yeah. my Hal Elrod miracle morning. But part of what I do is I write down at least three things I'm grateful for each morning do you really? before I ever I like go I like do that. anything. And then in the evenings, I come back and I write down three things I'm grateful for again. I call it bookending my day with gratitude. But I also record my big win for the day because I think okay. it's so important that we recognize those things. So, All right. And what if it was a bad day? What do you do? I find something. I find something to be grateful about because there's always something to be grateful Good. about. And I always find a win somewhere. Good. I like that. So I like that. All mm -hmm. right. What's the last question? Okay. Last question. Uh-oh. If your life's work was being summarized in a news article, what would the headline be? Um, he cared. Mic drop. It's beautiful. Does that work? <laughs> I love it. It's probably the shortest headline I've ever gotten, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. How do people find you? I know we, we've talked about some websites, but what's the best way to get in touch with you if somebody wants to reach out to you? Um, probably uh, email. Okay. Email. Want me to say it? Yeah, go ahead and okay. say it. Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, at Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y media m-e-d-i-a dot net and we will have that in the show notes as well okay, scott it has been an absolute pleasure no, having no, this time my, with you my my pleasure really and i have just one last thing to say to you go for it you are a vip oh well thanks now vip very important person person <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap for today Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.